Hi, I'm Tom. In this video, I'll show you how I built, speed painted, and based an entire Nighthawk army in 24 hours. I painted this army in a grim, dark, gritty, more realistic style to match the Nighthawk. I want them to look scary and like they've just crawled out of a grave in a horror film. It may be the scariest Warhammer army ever. I use contrast, enamel, and Citadel blood paint and some oil wash to get this effect. Even though the models are scary, this guide is easy to follow, gets results fast, and is super fun to do, so why not try it yourself? Please subscribe, like, and comment to let me know what you think, and also check out my other videos. Stay tuned to the end as you could own this army. Maybe even support me on Patreon to help me in making more videos like this. Like in my Death Guard speed painting video, I challenged myself to get through my pile of shame and to paint another full army as quick as possible. I hope this video teaches you some cool techniques and inspires you to do it yourself. The first stage is to build the models. This army is 105 models. It consists of Lady Olinda, Raikonor the Grim Hailer, Knight of Shrouds, Six Dreadblade Harrow, 50 Chain Rasp Hordes, a Tomb Banshee, 10 Dreadscythe Horridans, 13 Glaive Rage Stalkers, 8 Mere Morn Banshees, a Guardian of Souls, a Spirit Torment, 4 Grim Gas Reapers, Lord Executioner, and the Briar Queen. It took me 4.5 hours to build everything. Next step is Priming Black. One, two, three, KABLAMO! Thank you to thewarhub.com for sending me some free products to test. This Colour Forge matte black is really good. I'd recommend it. It goes on very smooth and adheres to the models well. And is around the same price as similar brand. Next stage is a bone colour. I bought this paint to test it. It wasn't great in an airbrush so I'd recommend getting a bone colour spray can. You only want to do a highlight of bone from above, leaving the black in the lower parts of the model on underneath. I then did a zenithal white from above and highlighted flames and candles. We're only targeting the very top of the model. All the priming took around three hours to do, so I was seven and a half hours in. The next stage is all the bone. That's what she said. I used skeleton horde contrast to paint all the skulls, arms, and rope. This only took around an hour and a half. Next stage is Blood Angels Red to paint all the roses on the models. The paint is very vibrant, I try not to go over the edges. This only took about an hour. Next stage. Militarum Green, to paint all the vines and leaves. For all the wooden parts, I use snakebite leather, plague bearer flesh and Militarum Green. I use this free towel sample as a palette to mix the paint. The snake bite was watered down one to one with water.
All the wood and vines were painted with this. The reason I water this down is it leaves patches if you put it on straight. I then used the plague bearer to stipple on moss colours onto the wood, aiming for around the bolts and at the bottom and edges of the wood. I then used the militarum to darken down those areas, give the effect of rotting wood. I also painted some green onto the flesh to make it look like it's decaying. Wildwood contrast was then used for all the leather parts and straps. Next stage was basing. I used AK Interactive Dark Earth Diorama paint for the bases and also to mimic rusty corroded metal. Placed a thin amount onto each of the bases and then a thin amount on the outside of the blades and scythes. This stage just took over an hour. They're not painting the metal. This only took two and a half hours. You need to paint over the mud on the blades and scythes as well. Then onto the gold. This only took 15 minutes as I only used gold on the special characters which were given gold accents and some of the armor or trim. I was now just under 15 hours in. I was very confident I'd get all this done in just under 24 hours and used this excitement to motivate me. A silicone and grey was used to paint the hair, tiles and gravestones. It only took about 45 minutes. Using this on the bases really brought out the details. I also repainted any candles in a bone colour. I then varnished the models to protect the base colour. One, two, kablam out! This colourful varnish, again, is good, it went on smooth. The next stage is oil wash. I'd recommend the artist oil colour, as the pigment is better. You literally just put a dollop of it in a clean jam jar, 
with some white spirit and shake it until it mixes. If you want it darker, add more oil paint. The stage is messy, so I'd recommend gloves. I obviously forgot my second glove here, so just sort that out here. I wash the oil all over the models, including the bases. Try and wick away any large pulls in any of the recesses. On some of the models, like a Linda, I did two coats of the oil. As I said before, you can just add extra oil paint into the mix to make it dark. By the time you finish the last model, the first ones will have dried. So I move straight on to cleaning away oil on the highlights, on the raised surfaces. I use cotton buds and makeup applicators to remove the oil. Just rub gently on the model and it will remove any oil from the raised surfaces, leaving behind the oil in the recesses. You can see here on the base, this is why oils are so amazing. It just automatically seeks out recesses and instant HD. The cylinder's starting to look epic. Watch this one's face. If you want to take off more oil, just wet your cotton bud with a bit of white spirit and wash away the oil from the raised surfaces or even the recesses. The great thing about this technique is if you don't like how it looks, then you can always add or remove more oil. It's very forgiving, especially when you've done a varnish base. How awesome does a Linda look right now? Sorry for the wobbly image, this is the flimsiest model I've ever built. I was just over 20 hours in at this point. The oil wash really added to the grim dark look. Here you can see on the bases, it fills all the recesses and makes it look weathered and grim. You can't tell this was covered in contrast paint. And then this is the messiest and most fun stage by far. This paint is called Blood for the Blood God. It's a technical paint from Games Workshop. This paint is designed to look like dark, thick blood. So I watered it down one to one with water, and then I flicked it onto the model with street patches over them. I'd recommend gloves and maybe a mask. My face was speckled with beads of blood. So you speckle this paint onto them, then go over the beads of blood with a brush which is slightly wet with white spirit. The spirit breaks the surface tension and makes the blood beads shrink to scale and congeal. I learnt this technique from Zat Kaskagu Miniatures. Check out their channel, they're the god of Grimdog.
you see here on Elinda it's making all the blood congeal and pool, which is the effect we're looking for. Afterwards I went with blood for the blood god on the brush, undiluted, did some streaks from her eyes. And then her nose. Got a nosebleed. This is looking epic. Just over 21 hours in now. I used AK Interactive Rust Streaks and Rust Pigment to weather the metal. Dab it onto the models and then wet your brush with white spirit and gently remove some. It's super quick. extra colour to their robes. On the weapons with the basing mix, it looks epic. I applied it and then removed it from the cutting edge. You can see here, combined with the blood splatter, it looks really gruesome and awesome. Straight out of a horror film. Then, this pigment powder. This is basically paint with no liquid in it. It's just dry paint particles. So you get it on your brush like normal and just rub it into the rust areas. I'm now 22 hours and 30 minutes into the build. I've only got an hour and a half to finish. I was really feeling the pressure now. The whole army is starting to come together now and look epic. Little things like this chain rasp with a broken weapon are slowing me down. I decided to do some OSL, which is object source lighting. So basically painting something like a candle, you paint around the candle to mimic the glow from it onto nearby surfaces. I airbrushed on no pressure onto the candles, intentionally spraying in a dome around them to mimic the glow from the candles. Marco Frizzoni does an awesome video on this. Check it out. It's super quick and gives amazing results. See here on this horse head, the light would glow down onto it. And on the candles in the base, you can see it's glowing on the stone around it.
Next is Liquitex Vivid Orange Ink. Use this to base the lower parts of the flame, leaving the origin of the flame yellow. All these OSL techniques only took 15 minutes, but really add to the overall look of the model. The final bit of the flames I sprayed black at the very tips. I then used the black in the airbrush to fade all of the cloaks and wisps on the models that they're fading into shadow or appearing from shadow. So spread this on the wisps of the, the horse's feet. And did a fade on the wings here, make it again look like it's appeared from shadow. Fly, you fools! All of the black fade took an hour and 15 minutes. Leaving me with 15 minutes to base the models. During one of the techniques before, I made some leaves for the bases. It's super easy to do. I used the Yandin yellow, Griffon orange and Blood Angels red. I painted a sheet of paper with a fade of them on both sides and dried it with a hairdryer. Cut out the white parts and then I used this Green Stuff World leaf punch to cut out the leaves. It cuts the paper in the shape of a mix of different leaf types. Bibbidi, bibbidi, bibbidi. Got an entire box of autumnal coloured leaves with hardly any effort. I glue some tufts and leaves to the bases on some of the characters and put a dab of oil wash on top to darken them down. As the army finished, I was over 24 hours by 15 minutes. I did it, but I didn't manage to base all the models or paint the rims. I think you can agree they look amazing. Especially Lady Alinda. Truly horrifying. Cool thing is, if you want this army, I'll be putting this army up for auction on eBay as soon as this video launches. The money from this will be put straight back into the channel to help it grow. All my links are in the description below. Please subscribe, like, comment and share and consider my Patreon if you want to support me further. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful.
I hope I motivated you to paint some of your own models. <laughs>